Well, folks, expo season is beginning. Insomnia 71 at the NEC in Birmingham. It's a little bit later than usual because normally it's August Bank Holiday weekend. But uh, not only is the expo a little later than usual, I'm making my video a little bit later in the weekend than usual. Normally, I'm here first thing on the first day. It's the afternoon of the last day. I was a little bit busy for the first couple of days of this expo. There'll be a video on that in a couple of days. But here's a picture for now. Might, might have broken, just broke, broken a little world record. Uh, but that's not what this video is about. This video is going to be your usual show floor tour of Insomnia 71. Let's go and have a little look around, shall we? So coming in through the main entrance, of course, we have the traditional Welcome to Insomnia sign up there. Over here we have Headbangers Rhythm Royale. I have no idea what that is. Moving out to a couple of games you can play there. Obviously, I've not played anything. I have been over in the LAN area doing my world record attempt the whole time, so I, uh, I haven't played any of these games. I might have a chance to do that a little bit later, but for now, we're just having a little bit of a tour. So they have the Nintendo Switch Splatoon 3 tournament area and a seat, who I've had a chair from before, which is pretty comfortable. And then a Red Bull Mini. That might have been handy during the during the world record attempt. But of course, we're going to come over here for the traditional thumbnail shot, which is there. Right. Thumbnail complete. Over here we have, what do we have? Oh, the family gaming area. So there's, there's colors, word searches, cardboard tents. I'm fascinated by this cardboard tent situation that people have been drawing all over. I think I saw a video on YouTube about these at some point. But they are cardboard tents that people have then drawn all over. And the Insomnia main stage is through there as well, which has panels and shows and things on throughout the event. And then we've got some FIFA going on here. And the VR gaming section, including omnidirectional treadmills, which I've always been intrigued by these but never had a goal one, so I always assumed the waist thing wouldn't get around me. The perils of being a chunky boy. Because it's Sunday afternoon, the queues are actually not too bad for any of this stuff. We've got the retro gaming section over here, which has got its usual selection of arcade machines. I think there's probably some pinball stuff in there. What have we got? Okay, so there's some console in there as well. A Guitar Hero machine that's had a queue the whole time we've been in there. Um, I don't think there is pinball actually this time. Looks like it's just... So we've got consoles in here. It's always very popular, these retro gaming sections. And then Zombie Checkpoint has been at the last few of these events. So this is a live experience where you basically go into this maze effectively and try not be try not to be killed by zombies another thing where i've always fancied having a go but just never had time for i'm always so busy on these uh on these convention weekends we've got a load of indie game stuff here various indie titles to try which if i do have a little bit of time this afternoon i always like to have a little work away work my way around this kind of stuff but nice little assortment going on there and now different chair brand so we've now got the GT Omega chairs and then some more games to try over here Steam World Build Phantom Spark I'm not sure what Phantom Spark is but you get various booths like this throughout the event with uh, with bits and bobs on to try and one there Zero Seabert Seabert and this was the big, uh, the big exclusive game for this event, which I probably should queue up to have a go on, even though I'm not really a fighting game guy. But this is, I forget whether it's a European exclusive or world exclusive first go of Tekken 8. So they've got a lot of PS5s in there where you can go in and have a little go on Tekken 8. And also, this is my friend that I made. We've got more VR stuff going on over here. I would suggest they're playing tennis. I think we can see on the screen here what they're actually doing. 
Oh, it is a tennis style game, but stuff like this is always very cool. Yeah. And then one of several military recruitment areas, which always a little bit questionable about these things in the end. But then we've got the army here, the RAF are over the other side. You can play World of Tanks in there as well if you want to. Or you can go to the recruitment office, which is over there on the other side, which again, questionable. And we can shoot up the other side of Tekken, which is just next to me there, where you've got one of many eateries that they have around the establishment. The Gamers Cafe, so be aware, as of any events like this kind of thing, very, very expensive to buy food in here. And there are places to buy food just outside, just at the edges of the event, so you might want to look at those. I always recommend Subway at the train station as a good option. So, once we get past that section, we then have the Creator section, which is absolutely deserted. That's what happens when I then pick up a creator pass, I guess. I'm officially in on an exhibitor pass because of the world record attempt. Uh, so yeah, that's where you would do the creator meet and greet. In fact, I don't think it is. I'm not fully up on how this works this time, so I didn't do the creator thing this time, so I was doing the other thing. But normally you would do informal meet and greets in there, but they actually have a meet and greet area there as well. And then they've also got the, uh, the streaming area. So I've streamed from these booths before not where I did it from this time but it's there it's here on the show floor so then if we head around the other side of the gamers cafe I think on the other side of this we've got a merch stand which because it's Sunday afternoon the merch stand is basically empty but pretty much sold out which is a bit of a shame to have to add any socks and then we have the tabletop area which is one of my favorite areas of the entire event because not only do you get to try out all these really cool games but over here you can see they sell pokemon cards and not only pokemon cards they've also got some disney Lorcana, which me and anna have got a little bit of but we are quite tempted to pick up some more we might be making some card purchases today i think this is based on a little bit of early research the best price at all for cards but the, uh, looks like the Disney ones have gone. They had some Disney Locana up there earlier for five pounds a pack, but they are now gone, it seems. We might have to go over the other side, but it's seven pounds a pack. But those things are like gold dust. You can't buy the packs anywhere online. So the fact that there are some here, we would like to pick some up. So over here, we have a queue for whatever a pyro cynical is, I guess. Some kind of YouTube thing. I don't really rate YouTubers personally, so. No idea what's going on in there. And then it looks like they've actually had a little bit of a restock of the merch stand. So they might have some socks in there after all. I've got one of the hoodies because I got really cold during my stream, so they went and fetched me a hoodie. So we have got a few bits and bobs here. Still no sign of any socks. But you can, if you want, pick up some insomnia flip flops or bucket hat. Merch is actually getting pretty good at this event. A towel is great for an event where people sleep over. That's very, very cool. What is that? Is that pants? That might be underpants. <laughs> so behind this, we have Lenovo and Intel. We've got a massive setup of various computer mobs. This is the cosplay area here along with somewhere where you can buy routers. That poor guy looks like he's been here all weekend and he's ready to go home. No one's even sitting on his bean bags. Overclockers with lots of PCs with shiny fancy lights on. For once I don't even have to be nice to them and beg for a PC because I just got my new PC. That being said, if overclockers want to send me one of these, then I'll talk about it a bit more next time. And then we just about hit all of the uh, 
all of the stalls, and you know I love the stalls, but there's some more cards over here. I think this was the other place they had the Disney World Carnival, but they were £7 a pack over here when we looked, and they may have all gone again. But we've got uh, lots of Pokemon cards. I think all the Disney stuff has gone. Oh my word, that is... My new PC isn't that fancy. That's boys and girls with a chair in a box. And then I think this is CEX, who, as well as having lots of places where you can just sit and play games, also have their How Fast Can You Assemble a PC Challenge. And then we've got more Pokemon stuff, including one of several places where you can buy graded cards, mystery packs, or neon signs. I was excited for a second when I saw this stall because I had an Ultimate Warrior mask and I thought that might mean wrestlers in the uh, figures, vintage figures bits at the bottom. Unfortunately, no wrestlers, even though there are lots of figures and more comic books than you see at Comic Con these days. Oh, I see the pop vinyls over right there, we'll get there in a moment and have a little nose through those but as usual we are on the hunt for a giraffe rig in the wild i don't really rate my chances but if we see one we will obviously make that purchase have we been up this way i think mean, it's the back end of the cosplay stand so we will come round this way and just loop back round where we get more internet hosting i guess at an event that's known for its land party internet hosting means it makes sense i've just never seen it at a convention before and now there's multiple of it so we've obviously had a bit of a push trying to get stuff like that here mouse mats massive mouse mats there as well lots of i mean maybe i've just got a new pc maybe i should be looking at the mouse mats get myself something a little bit cooler than the one that came with the pc might come back and have a look at them in a bit. We've noticed lots of dice here. There's an example of lots of dice. And then more clothes, weapons. Obviously I'm more interested in the collectibles. So we've got various figures, a few pop models on this one as well. We are still operating the Kevin rule. So if we see one, it's called Kevin, no matter what the uh, franchise, unless I've already got it, we make the purchase, but no Kevins here, it seems. But there are loads more dice next door. And then various hardware bits, which at an event like Insomnia makes a lot of sense, because if your mouse breaks while you're here, you're gonna to wanna to be able to get a new one. So all your peripherals and things are there. And then this, is the stage that my presentation was on, my official Guinness World Record. I was on there at the time of recording about an hour and a half ago. I imagine I'll overlay some photos now of me getting my official certificate with the man in the official blazer. Special effects, as they are at most gaming events, are here and they are a great charity. Well worth checking them out, supporting them, do a lot of good work. We've done fundraising for them in the past. They are excellent yet more dice this time from the dice shop and then we've got these really cool little uh, pokemon models which i always think are really great but also think are quite expensive and i'd probably break them but they are very very cool so if we head down this way from one dice shop to is this another one no they're thumb grips and things and these big pokemon cards are great all is cool again the dra giraffe rig rule applies to all this stuff if they had a giraffe rig one of these i would get it the chances of them having one are close to zero i think but it's time for the main event of the video it is the funko pops and they've very helpfully put the pokemon ones on the end for me including that very snazzy looking limited edition charmander oh do i make a purchase They've got a flock Espeon, which is very, very cool as well. Sonic Minecraft runs at the bottom, which I think Anna was going to make a Minecraft purchase, weren't you? <laughs> she backed out when she saw they're now 25 quid. I quite like these, actually. 
I might get one of these. They're selling the, um, the acrylic cases to put retro games in. And I've got my original uh, Pokemon Blue for Game Boy. And the box I've got to put it in is Rex. So we might pick up one of those. They look pretty good. And then if we head round on this bit, we've got the ones that are hidden behind plastic because they're so expensive. I mean, the, the price on some of these is, is absolutely bonkers. I like a pop vinyl as much as the next guy, but I don't know that I'd spend 75 to 100 pounds on one. I paid about 40 pounds for my Kevin out of home loan. I think my flocked Jeffrey Toys R Us one might have been close to that price though. So. And then they've got more of the mega expensive ones on this side. Stranger Things. We're looking for Disney because Anna wants some Disney ones. They've got some, we do like a Wally, so they've got Charging Wally, which I think Anna's probably going to pick up. And I quite like annoyed sticks, so we might get a couple of those. They've also got a glittery sparkly stick, which is very, very nice. But these two wallies are very cool. That one's a limited edition from previous convention. So maybe we'll grab one of those. And then I didn't get to have a look at these, but I had a quick dart over here earlier because uh, the Marvel ones are always very expensive. They have an only at Toys R Us, Star Lord. Which is, that's the first time I've seen an only at Toys R Us figure since they came back. And that makes me very, very, very happy. What confuses me a bit is the only at Primark one there. I didn't realize Primark had exclusive pops. So that one's pretty cool. Yeah, we're gonna wheel back around and make some purchases in a bit, I think. But just to finish off our little tour, See, we've got more uh, more Pokemon themed kind of bits and bobs, more art. We've got the Royal Navy over here, so we have the army over one side. Over this side, we've got the Navy, and I think in the land hall, we've got the Air Force. So the yeah, art is definitely worth checking out at conventions. It's always pretty cool. I don't have any wall space left in my house, so that'd be something very, very special to make it in. But it is always very good. And then, oh, more collectibles. We do like a collectible around these parts, everybody. Lots of retro games and Pokemon cards. This, this is mine and Anna's kind of fun. Including uh, very reasonable price of stuff. On the more, uh, I don't know what you would describe them as things to put in our land yeah. more neon signs and then the new Pokemon cards graded over here which you don't want to get too close to because I walked past this before and they pounced on me I don't like to be pounced on but more graded card mystery bags as well more art over there yet more dice over on this side and on this side we have rocks and then we have cuddly things, including this guy, who's not quite as soft as my friend Inca from Sandy Balls the other week, but he is pretty soft. And then we've got more mystery bags. Now we've got Intel over here with their massive setup. ITV Sports, which I don't know what that is. And then JD. I've got this thing over here with the Cyber Power Bus and E behind them, that big back up with overclockers, and that brings us through into where I've spent most of the weekend, which is in the Land Party and Esports Arena. So the bit that we're just leaving now is a bit that gets shut overnight, and this area is a bit that's been open 24 hours a day since I got here. Well, I arrived on Wednesday, but the show opened up on Wednesday evening, I think. And yeah, there's lots of places in here to play games and watch people play games. We have another merchandise stand, which this one does look a little bit more uh, 
ransacked and the other one there's very little left on here this one will hold a special place in my heart because when i was spe especially cold during my stream in this air-conditioned hall they ran down and fetched me a hoodie from there but no sign of any socks anywhere we've got the massive esports stage in front of us which makes a lot of noise a lot of the time the food places where the people who are here for the land party can come and grab their food and I now know from experience that these places are open from about 7am in the morning through to about 4am they don't close for very long and the bacon they sell first thing in the morning smells delicious and then you've got the army over here again I thought this was the RAF and it looks like it is the army and uh, that stage there is where they do karaoke in the middle of the night and then that brings us to the LAN area the bring your own computer area which have been open since Wednesday night and it looks like it is being packed away and a lot of people are on their way home now but you can just bring your own computer it's what sets insomnia apart from other gaming conventions you can bring your own computer and just hang out in there playing games with your mates for five days and like two halls that way they have uh, they have a load of places where you can put tents and like I say food that's open all the time and then that brings us to the main event of the entire festival which is the Joe and Mitchum stand where I spent well I can tell you exactly how long I spent in here because we have the sign right here which confirms the world record and you'll see all about that one in the video that was about that event that will be with you in just a couple of days time.